Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to talk about ColorOS 12 running on my Find X3 Pro. It's officially available in beta right now specifically for the Find X3 Pro. It's going to be coming to other devices. I'm also going to share with you guys a little bit about the rollout plan so you should know roughly when your device is going to be receiving ColorOS 12. This is TK and this is my favorite features of ColorOS 12 and the features that Oppo decided to incorporate from Android 12 into ColorOS 12. Let's check them out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified too whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here we have it, ColorOS 12 running on my Find X3 Pro. Uh, so keep it here again, I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about the rollout plan in a little bit. Uh, some of the main things I want to talk about first is what did Oppo bring over from Android 12? So the main features that if you've seen the Pixel version of Android 12, what do we have here? First and foremost, if we bring down the notification shade, we'll notice there's a couple of options here. The mic access uh, option here and the camera access are present here as a toggle. We're able to activate them, deactivate them, and also the ability of seeing if something is using our microphone or our camera. So if I go ahead and launch the uh, assistant, you notice right there that we have the nice little icon at the top telling me the microphone is being used. If I turn on the camera, get the same thing. And if we swipe down from the top, we actually get the notification toggle up there. So we know always when or what actually is using our camera or our microphone. Very nice, very simple, and of course it is available here. The other thing that we also have here is the ability of using the location or the approximate location as we've seen it in the past. So here under Instagram, if I jump down into permission and then we go down to location, I have it set here right now to be off on precise location. And by doing so, it says when precise location is turned off, app can access your approximate location. And that is built in now. So it's very nicely incorporated. Of course, you can always turn it on, take it on, and then of course change it. All of the permission options that we get there are all gonna be there. So it's very nice and very easy to customize. The last thing, of course, we're gonna talk about is the privacy dashboard. That's gonna be something that we jump down over here to privacy. And of course, the privacy dashboard is built in and we get the same aggregate information of all the, uh, basically the usage of our camera here, been using it a lot past 24 hours. Uh, the battery, as you can imagine, is still at 100%. That's one of the reasons why it's not showing a lot of usage there. But uh, that's in there again, all of that is gonna be very easy to use and customized exactly the way you'd expect it. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about to you guys is uh, one of the things that Android 12 talked about was the fact that we can now theme our system using the theme engine. Now. That theme engine isn't here. What we do have here is the ability of using uh, basically the personalization tab in the system. So we can either jump in from wallpapers here, we get the same experience, or if we jump over and go over into the customization tab here in the settings, jump down here, and then under personalization, we have the ability now customizing, uh, we'll talk a little bit more also about the always on display 2.0, but the wallpapers. If I select the color, let's say I want to go ahead and switch, change the wallpaper right now to something like this. I'll go ahead and hit apply and I'm going to make it so that it runs on both the lock screen and the home screen. From there, I'm going to go back a little bit. And then of course, under colors now, I have the ability of selecting and changing the color scheme of my UI element. And what I'm talking about here, you notice right now, these are red and green. Once we have that done, it actually go ahead and apply that to the system. So it's no longer green. It's now down into more of a pastel. We can go into the default colors. Uh, that's the typical, typical ones that we got in the system. We can go with trendy, classy. There's an additional few options in there, or you can even go in there and customize your own. Very nice. And it goes across the UI elements, even into the settings tabs, and you can customize it. Uh, we can of course change the font, the fingerprint animation, the edge. Uh, quick tiles, the icon pack, of course, can also be customized as well directly within the app. So a lot of nice customizations in there. And of course, we want to talk about the always on display, the new version of it. First and foremost, you'll notice I am using the emoji one. That's the new feature that was added also with uh, ColorOS 12. We also have the silhouette. That's the ability of using an image of yourself and it creates an outline. Of course, we also still have the ability of using those customizable wallpapers that we can actually create on our own. So we have the ability of using custom patterns. You can create your own a text pattern text and image, of course, portrait silhouette, and of course, last but not least is the emoji. And of course, all of these things can be customized. And then of course, when you shut off the display, you're able to actually see them directly. And I really like this one. I tried to do my best to make uh, one that looks very close to the way I feel like. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the color on the beard, but hopefully that'll be a feature in the future that we can customize. Of course, we have additional options in here that we can add. And of course, we could just put an image, uh, changing and all of that stuff. Uh, there's a lot of options here that we can do to customize our system. Now, the other option I wanna talk about is some of the things that they added under accessibility. So if we jump down into the accessibility under system setting, there's a few options that they added. First, obviously, we have the ability of using, uh, the ability of actually customizing the color or the color inversion here. So if we jump over here, we can turn it on. Uh, we don't have just the ability of going to grayscale. We can go to red filter, green filter, blue filter, and we can change the intensity of each filter turned on. 
So if there's a concern about color sensitivity, this is definitely easy to customize. Uh, we have the ability obviously of using um, hearing aid, mono audio, sound amplifier. They also have the ability of using touch to sound and that's this little function here. I'll give it a second and I'm gonna select this section. Sound amplifier, use headphones to improve audio. So it'll read it for us and it works really good also for reading emails for us. So really nice, a lot of good comf uh, functional options here. And of course, all of this is built in to ColorOS 12. Now, one of the other things that they also changed here is the battery tab. So going in there, first and foremost, you can obviously see the usage of the battery. We have a nice little graph showing us exactly how, how the battery usage is going. And also the ability of jumping into a straight into power saving mode right away from the top. Very simple, very easy to customize. Now, the other thing that Oppo did here with ColorOS 12 is they're trying to go for that simplified UI design and be a little bit more inclusive in their, in their design elements, meaning bringing in and listening to their user feedback from their over 70 different languages that they support. For me, on my devices, I typically include Arabic and English as a language. So if I wanna be able to just switch languages between the two, I just change what the primary language is, and then my entire system UI will switch over. And you can see here, the notification panel shows up. I have it both in Arabic and in English. And again, it works for the region that you're in and the languages that you want. Uh, definitely works much better, obviously, for the languages uh, that are better translated since they're bringing in experts to make sure that the translations are done correctly. And one of the other areas that we can see that the UI has been simplified and less cluttered is here, directly in the settings tab. You could see that definitely here, like home screen and lock screen always on display has been simplified to home screen. Everything fits a little bit better at the top. Uh, you have more information clearly identified the color scheme. And again, we can still theme all of these options in there and looks really, really nice. So overall, you're gonna notice minor changes in the system, but all of these changes will make the system simpler, easier to navigate, and of course, just even more inclusive. The UI elements are very familiar to the way we've seen them before. We have the Google feed sitting here on the left side, access to everything. We can customize the UI elements the same way we used to be able to before. We can customize them, change the, uh, you know, the grid size, the home screen uh, options. Uh, you can change the animation speed to be fast. That's one of the reasons why it looks so smooth and so nice. Also the AI engine or the uh, basically the AI system uh, booster system is built in here to be able to give us a little bit more of that bounce effect. So you notice right there when I'm actually using the system, there's a little bit of a bounce effect when we actually use this UI. Also, same thing kind of goes in with the app drawer. All of the stuff works very nicely. I upgraded straight from Android 11 from ColorOS 11 to ColorOS 12 beta. So a lot of my information is still here. Uh, the Omoji application is simple. It's going to be coming in later. I did customize this one for mine. There's some default ones that are built in here. And of course, you can go ahead and change the different options in there. You can actually, uh, actually, well, go back. We'll go ahead and hit edit. And you can go in to change uh, the skin, the head, the hair, the brows, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears, and the uh, basically uh, headwear, glasses, everything to kind of give you that experience. And, and from there, you can actually customize it to your own use. So you can say use Omoji and you can customize it change the different backgrounds and then using it there you can actually uh, customize it take some images and of course you can share it and that was what I used at the beginning of the video very nice very simple uh, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about of course is phone manager it's one of those new applications they also added and this gives us a little bit more of an easy usability of the system so we can jump straight into privacy from the application and into the privacy dashboard uh, we can also jump back in here to app management go in there customize the different apps battery takes us straight into it so essentially some shortcut op options to be able to simplify using the device as well as the ability of kind of optimizing deleting uh, cache files privacy options of course security protection and general cleaning just to optimize the system and allow it to run as fast as possible so Phone manager is built in here. Uh, we have the new Omoji. We have some of those really cool uh, options in there. Uh, but last but not least, one of the really nice thing is they've updated the FlexDrop application. So let's go ahead and open up the Google Play Store. I'm gonna bring it up here. You'll notice right there, floating window. Now FlexDrop automatically opens up at the top. If I interact with the window, I can actually scroll through, get it done. I can now also move it and I can also dock it to the left. That's one of the nice things. So let's say you're using an app, you wanna come back to it. I can just swipe back, go in, do whatever I want. I can bring it back and of course I can close it or even bring it up as a full screen app. Very nice and very simple. It doesn't work with every app, but it works really nice to, uh, to be able to do multitasking on the next level. We still have the option of using the three finger uh, translation. So I'm gonna go ahead and just basically select the screen here. And this enables us to basically do on uh, with straight translation from the three finger translation. So this one is gonna go straight from Arabic to English, translates it for me, and it obviously will work with any other language. You can customize it and change your preference. All of these things are still there. FlexDrop is very nice to update it to the new system option. And of course, everything else works really, really nice. Uh, the other thing I wanna to mention to you guys, we have the new GPA 2.0 for gaming. So experience in gaming is gonna work really nice as well as the ability of the system UI functionalities. Everything looks really, really good and it's getting so much better. 
Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about PC Connect. That's one of the new features they also announced and it is gonna be coming in as a separate update later on. And the way this actually works is very simple. You'd be able to basically use it from the notification panel. There will be an option in here that says PC Connect and it enables us to connect to a Windows PC running the desktop application. So what I'm showing you right now is an example of how it would look like. Uh, you're able to transfer files from your phone. You're able to actually uh, connect to the phone, see the home screen on the phone, swipe through, change different options on the phone. And of course, get that multitasking experience without having to check your phone all the time. Very nice, very simple, and it is gonna be available on Oppo devices coming in as an update a little bit later on. One of the really good things that I love about this is that Oppo took everything they did for ColorOS 11 and then built everything on top of that. So all the new features we saw with ColorOS 11 are here. Uh, the new flex drop uh, optimization that we have the ability to be able to duck it on the left side. Of course, the picture in picture functionality is still in there. We're still able to do that by the ability of pinching and zooming on the picture in picture. Uh, dark theme options here, we have multiple dark themes, so we don't necessarily have to have that extra dim feature that we have with uh, Pixel devices. All of that is running really nicely on here. And of course, uh, the ability of customizing or disabling, enabling the mic access and the camera access are here. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys are wondering how is the rollout of all of these devices or all of these features are gonna be coming to other devices and what's roughly the plan that's going on right now. Um, I will say this, that in October, the Find X3 Pro is pretty much gonna be the main device that's receiving it. Uh, in November, we're probably gonna be seeing some more with the Find X2 Pro, the Find X2 Pro Lamborghini Edition and going on with the Reno 6 Pro. Uh, in December, there are gonna be more devices, the Reno 6, the Reno 5, of course, the Reno 6Z and other devices. And then of course, then they're gonna be going in uh, over to the other devices. My recommendation is if you guys can do a pause on the video right there to be able to see where your device fits. And of course, you'll be able to see when this should be coming to your device. And the last thing that was really exciting that announced was the fact that they're actually allowing us to know exactly uh, what's their support plan for their devices. What I'm talking about is how many years they're going to be giving us software updates, so Android version updates, as well as how many years of security patch updates that's going to be coming to each device. Now, it's not the same for every single one, depending on the version. So if it's the A series, the F series, uh, it's going to be depending on that device. But of course, I'm very happy to see that Oppo is being transparent about that and allowing us to know exactly what we should expect with our devices. Color OS 12 is great. It is not final. This is still the beta that I'm running on the Find X3 Pro. There's gonna be more features coming in. Uh, PC Connect is not actually currently running. It should be coming in as an update as well as Omoji a little bit later on. And of course, there'll be more updates and more features added as time goes on. That's the beauty of the way Opal does with their devices. So are you as excited as I am about ColorOS 12? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, like and subscribe as usual. I'll see you in the next video.